You are listening to an American Free Press podcast. Joining me on the line is Republican State Senator from South Carolina, Lee Bright. Senator, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Senator, we spoke, believe it or not, almost five and a half years ago, where does the time go, about the alternative currency study that you had initiated in the South Carolina legislature. Before we get into the next matter that we're going to discuss, which is the refugee crisis or the coming refugee crisis here in the United States, can you give the listeners a little background about any updates on that alternative currency study? It was used against me in the last re-election campaign in 2012 and again in 2014 for the U.S. Senate. And then now my re-election in 2016, my announced opponent is already talking about it. So, you know, nobody wanted to take it seriously. So I guess it's going to take a collapse to get people's attention, but uh, then it'll be too late. But I've kind of moved on because we just haven't gotten any traction at all. And it's been demagogued, which we anticipated that from the onset, but there just hadn't been any movement at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly what you were telling me about five and a half years ago, was that the mainstream media, the elite media, and other sectors were mocking it out. Yeah, that did the new Confederate currency. It was one of those things where I joked everyone, but you can see that the rest of the world is taking it very seriously with the rise of cryptocurrencies. And if you look at what the banks are doing now, you know, they're buying up the gold, the physical gold out of Venezuela. So they sure are hedging their bets, although they, they make jokes about it. They, they are hedging. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's something like whistling past the graveyard, as they say. Yeah. This new matter that you are getting some attention on, of course, there was an article in the New York Times. I'll call it the New York Times. People have some other names for it or words for it. Yeah. Yeah. We won't go there now, but the headline was Refugee Crisis in Syria Raises Fears in South Carolina. And this was just September 25th, and it was in Duncan, South Carolina, which I've been to a couple times. Pretty much everybody knows what's going on with the United States and NATO getting involved in other countries' businesses and business and creating the situation that we have today with all these refugees. And in this Absolutely. article, yeah, and in this article, you're mentioned, it says State Senator Lee Bright, who represents Greenville and Spartanburg counties, has called for, quote, open hearings, close quote, on the resettlement effort, echoing the concerns of some fellow Republicans who say it is difficult to perform background checks on Syrian refugees given the chaos that has engulfed their country. Many critics point to the congressional testimony of Michael Steinbach, Assistant Director of Counterterrorism for the FBI, who told the House Committee in February that Syria lacked systems that could provide information to evaluate refugees. Senator, what can you tell the listeners about what you want to propose and about how this refugee crisis is impacting your state and your counties? Well, the governor signed off on it, and, you know, I was taken aback because Congressman Gowdy had some questions that have not quite been answered from the Secretary of State's office, and we've had a meeting with the Assistant Secretary of State, and the answers haven't changed. I mean, the data sets don't exist to screen these folks, and, you know, it's a problem we created, but they're putting the burden squarely on the schools and the hospitals and the people of South Carolina, and we haven't had much of a say outside of our governor. I guess that goes under the old caption, elections have consequences. She has not been as forthcoming on a lot of issues that we hold dear in South Carolina, but we're a term limit state when it comes to our governor's elections, so, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. I mean, it's, they don't have to be reelected, so if they tend to, like any other position, they tend to look for what's next in that, you know, lame duck term. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you're talking about Governor Nikki Haley, right? Right, yeah. She's limited. She's going to only serve two more years. And the response on this has not been what many folks in my district would, would have expected. But mm-hmm. we did put a proviso in that would not allow state money to be spent. But she signed for the federal money, so we're kind of in a box you know, mm-hmm. as far as recourse goes because she has signed on to the program. Her real name is Nimrata Nikki Randhawa Haley, and she was born in 1972. She's actually very young, and I think that a lot of folks were kind of disappointed in her when that event, that alleged event occurred in South Carolina where that fellow, that alleged person, allegedly murdered these people in this church. I mean, I cannot say for sure that it happened, obviously, because I wasn't there. I don't think you were there. And that's the way that these things have to be described as alleged. Because there is well, 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 my big issue is, I don't know if you've read the latest, but that they have this Klan rally that got all kind of national media attention shortly after that. 
And now we've discovered that the head of the organization, North Carolina, was actually an undercover FBI agent. Surprise. So, yeah, so, you know, we're not saying that Obama sent him down because, you know, Obama came to the funeral and brought up the flag. And, you know, I wouldn't say he would order an FBI agent to do such a thing, but I don't believe anything past Obama. So, you know, I served with Senator Pinckney, and when you look at the circumstance, I have no doubt that what had happened, I mean, they had, had surveillance of the gentleman coming in and out of the church, but it's the Rahm Emanuel mode of never let a tragedy go to waste. And they went after guns to begin with, and then when they found out that the FBI had not returned the background, check in time, they realized that all their laws and regulations didn't come through, so they decided to shift it, and they were able to take down the Confederate flag off of what's something that even Senator Pinckney voted for the compromise to put it off the dome and on the ground, so very disturbing. And then our governor, I mean, she went through two elections and didn't have a problem with it, and then she went and cried in front of the caucus begging them to take down the flag because it was so racial, and, you know, it was just quite an epiphany. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. A lot of folks are disappointed with her about face with that, because anyone Anyone with less than half a brain can understand and recognize that the Confederate flag isn't a symbol of racism. The Confederate flag is a symbol against federal tyranny, which, of course, founded this country. And every red bullet American should want to support the Confederate flag because they should be against the government because that's what it's all about. You can't trust the government. Would you agree with that, Senator? Yeah, I was in New York City, and I was amazed at the number of folks that were supportive of the flag. So that is a situation where I believe that it's a greater discussion. They've got to demonize Jefferson, and they've got to make you know our founders nothing more than, than slave owners, and they've got to smudge them in order to change the heroes and rewrite history, and they're well on their way. It's a shame. And you mentioned Obama coming to the funeral of these folks who were, and I have to say it again, allegedly murdered. Although I do respect and understand that you did serve with Senator Pinckney, and you have no doubt that it actually happened. Nobody so bigger than conspiracies than me, but I doubt that that occurred. But this thing of the FBI undercover agent organizing the Klan rally on the Capitol grounds is beyond the pale, and Obama owes people sacking on apology for such a ruse. I mean, the best thing he could do is just leave that office as soon as possible. The FBI has a long history of doing just that. So again, all people have to do is just read. And that's all. And they could find that out. But here it is. Obama's coming to this funeral. But what about all of the cops that have been murdered because of his silence and his crony silence when it comes to these animals that attack law enforcement officials? Are you having any of those problems in South Carolina? Yeah. Obama comes with his own brand of racism and he gets a pass on it. But he's done more to divide this country. And, you know, I do look forward to his term ending and hopefully we can return to sanity in this country. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. I'm sure a lot of folks do. Now, right now in South Carolina, there's not that many refugees. Is that right? They had a photograph of these folks from the Democratic Republic of Congo taking an English as a second language class in Spartanburg. A Christian nonprofit group has resettled only 32 refugees in the region. It says most of them Christians fleeing troubled countries like Congo and Myanmar. Any sign of refugees pouring into your counties right now? Not yet, but my understanding is that Obama's really going to ramp it up, and we don't have the Syrians, and most of the ones that have come in are Christians, but we don't anticipate that. I think that's kind of the lull you into a false sense of security, and then, you know, he's going to try to change the demographics. I mean, you look at and the Muslims typically have larger families, and you put them in a place like Spartanburg, and you're just trying to change the voter turnout and have more folks that you know have more in line with Obama's worldview than ours. What are the chances of it actually happening, you think? Oh, I think it's very likely. And when do you think it's going to happen? I would think over the next year you'll see the influx. They're bringing them throughout the county. My understanding is it's going to impact Greenville as well. You know, the upstate, if you look, you know, just, just as an aside, Polling showed that the upstate was in support of state rights, sovereignty, and the flying of the Confederate flag. And, you know, they're targeting the upstate with these refugees. So it's very clear they want to change the upstate of South Carolina. It's kind of the buckle of the Bible Belt. They would like to see, obviously, a change in the worldview here. And the best way for them to do that is to bring in a lot of refugees. It's a shame. Did you happen to mention during your discussions with fellow legislators and perhaps constituents that the reason that these refugees might be pouring into your state is because of policies by the federal government? Yeah, you know, we wouldn't have the crisis. I mean, they, they Mubarak in Egypt was very sympathetic to the Christians, and Assad has been fair to Christians over there. So what has happened is, you know, ISIS has come in, which is something that, you know, was fostered by McCain and Graham. They went over and aided the Syrian rebels who had ties with al-Qaeda, who 
were the radicals and we basically are amazed at what's transpired. So these terrible policies have produced terrible results and it's going to take some real leadership to rectify them. You know, a lot of these folks that we see that are fleeing to the European countries are military-aged men and we ought to be aiding them and fighting to take their country back. But, but instead, you know, we're allowing the most radical to take over the region. Yeah. You were one of just three state senators that voted against removing the Confederate flag. Is that right? Yeah, it was 41 to 3. We had one gentleman that was not president, and there's 46 members, but obviously Tim Pickney was no longer with us, so he had not been replaced at that point. But it was heartbreaking. A lot of pressure came on us, and people just buckled under the pressure. So it was the result of you know, CNN sticks enough cameras in people's faces, they start to be intimidated. Well, I'm glad, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners are glad that you didn't buckle and you don't buckle because you're one of the few people out there who speaks his mind and who doesn't care about what other people think about. And what you're saying makes sense. Anything listeners can do, even if they're not in your district. Brightforsenate.com is my website. You know, I'm being attacked on all these issues, and I have a re-election coming up next summer. So, you know, we're fundraising now, so feel free to check out the website, brightforsenate.com. Any U.S. citizen can help. Believe it or not, enough $5 donations can make a difference. That's a fact. That's been proven. Senator Lee Bright from South Carolina, State Senator Lee Bright, hopefully soon Senator Lee Bright from South Carolina. I want to thank you so much thank for this. So much. Yeah, well, I want to thank you so much for the time you spent explaining all this to the listeners, and hope to talk to you again real soon. I appreciate it, Bob.